like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, you guys had did the performance, and I remember the crowd just going crazy. And I said, oh, it's on, y'all. It's on. And it just took <laughs> off from there. But yeah. let's get back from your perspective now. Once you got out to uh, the Bay Area to audition, how did you feel when you when you were actually in the process of auditioning? I was a little nervous, but I don't know if you remember, but I got there late. My flight was delayed. Yes. So I got to the audition late, and I remember thinking then, okay, you know, I don't know how they're going to look at me now because I'm coming on late. So I just, you know, I'm just going to go in there and do what I do. And if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I, I really had to detach myself from the outcome, and that's what I did. But I remember the auditions were over, but the girls were still there. I remember them, Denny, giving me a tape, and this was the process that everybody had gone through. He told me to go out into the car, listen to the song, and then I had to come back in and sing it. And so I remember Cindy was there the same day I was, and she took me out to the car. I remember I met Cindy in passing. I didn't really know her. I just met her in passing when she came to Houston that time. We were working with, you know, Carl Lewis and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so... um. Uh, so we sat in the car and I listened to the song and went over it a couple of times and then uh, I went back in and, and sang it. And then I remember that was pretty much it. But I remember they were looking at the chemistry that all four of us had because we all showed up ironically on the same day. Mm. And they were looking at the chemistry the four of us had together and, and the blend. Because um, part of the audition was I sang lead, all of us sang, had a chance to sing lead on that song, and then we all sang background together. So they were listening to us singing lead, and they were listening to the blend that we had. And mm. they were just blown away by both. And so I remember when I left and went back to school, it was homecoming week. It was like maybe, it might have been like maybe a week later. And I remember um, Denny and Maxine calling, and they were like, you know, told me I made the audition, and they were like, well, you know, People are used to three girls in a group, but why can't we just have four? So I was the fourth one, pretty wow. much, because I was the only one that lived pretty much abroad. So he liked us so much together. He was like, nah, I got, we got to have four. I want her. And do you remember so. the song that you auditioned on? Oh, yeah, the song. It's on the first CD called um, Born to Sing. The name of the song is called Waiting on You, and it's the actual audition piece. You're kidding. Unedited. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Wow, see, we're getting a lot of in vogue history today. That's some great stuff right there. So now, once the group took off, were you ready for all the success that followed? Not mentally. I mean, like, I hadn't ever imagined it being that way. For me, I was just so excited to be there, you know, to be in California, to be a part of the group, to be singing. I hadn't even fathomed anything, you know, the success that followed. I hadn't even thought about it. None of us did. In fact, we didn't catch up with it until the second record. Because mm. it took off so quick. A Hold On was the fastest selling single in all of Atlantic Records history. Wow. Yep, it took off really fast. So one day you were unknown, the next day you were like pretty much known. Yeah, and it was hard to handle. Because, mm. you know, people were staring at you and I, I wasn't used to that. <laughs> I was like, oh, Lord. I'm cool with all the fame. I'm, I'm cool with the fortune, but the fame? Oh, my God. You know what? That's funny because a lot of people don't know you were kind of like shy in a way. And yeah. I can remember that uh, a lot of times when uh, we were working together, everything was buttoned up to the top and everything was all just covered oh, from head sweet. to toe. I was like, wow. And then to that see you sweet. in these outfits, it was kind of crazy. Yeah, it was, it was crazy for me. And, and the, you know, the, the my nickname in the group is The Nun. <laughs> That's a good one. That's so a good one. It was, it was always an issue when it came to wardrobe for me. I was like, I ain't wearing that. I feel naked. <laughs> that is so funny. It was, it was trippy. It was real trippy for me. Just to even show my legs because I didn't like wearing dresses. I wouldn't, you know, I mean, I did if I had to, but that wasn't me. I was blue jeans and cowboy boots. Wow. So, But eventually you got used to that, huh? Yeah, I got used to it. Wow. That's great stuff. We're going to take a quick break right now and get back with Terry Ellis after these messages. The Mark Allen, the Mark Felton, Allen Felton, Show. Felton Show. Mark Allen Felton Show. Mark Allen Felton. I do it for love. The ultimate love CD. Includes the hit singles. Love me. I'm all yours. Love Jones. Love Colin and do it. Now available at markallenfelton.com. Get your copy today. 
Hey, everybody, this is Tico Wells, choir boy from the Five Heartbeats, and you're listening to the Mark Allen Felton Show. We're back here with Sherry Ellis, uh, having a great conversation here. It's kind of difficult to talk to her without going back and checking the history because, you know, we go back so far, and it's like, you know, we always have fun um, talking about these things. And I had a great time just watching her career unfold like that. I always knew that uh, she was going to be a big star, and it came true. And I'm just glad that uh, everything worked out for you, Cherry. Thank uh, you. Nowadays, things change quite a bit. We have an emergence of so many girl groups. Mm-hmm. Has any of those girl groups ever, like, contacted you or have you seen it passing or the group in passing and just said, oh, I can't believe it. You guys are the ones that got us started and that type of stuff. Yeah, Destiny's Child. You know, they talked about how, you know, we were an inspiration to them and most of the girl groups, actually. Everybody was always really, really cool and really acknowledging you know, to us, and it was really well appreciated. Oh, that's really good. Jay, what do you think about the uh, music industry today? Well, it's definitely evolved because of technology. It feels fabricated. You don't really have any more record companies, and you have a lot of uh, artists who don't really understand instrumentation because of technology. Mm. That's all good because, you know, we, we grow and we evolve, and that's what's, that's kind of what's happening. And that becomes something great as well. You know, I'm not trying to down it, but just from where I come from, it feels a little different now. But that's just, you know, me growing and evolving with the times. So like, like when you came along, it was more or less like people were playing the instruments live, and um, you really had to like learn an instrument just to really be noticed. Is that what you yeah, said? Yeah, you had to work. You had to work. Now it's now everything is it feels like a quick fix. Mm. You know, there's no bar anymore. The bar is set really, really low now. I'm not trying to take away from the talent that's out there. There's a lot of talent that's out there. I'm just saying that the bar is is low. And from where I come from, you know, the bar was set. It was high, really, really high. So we had to really work hard and really, really reach for it. I mean, we came we came from behind, you know, Rita Franklin, Gladys Knight, Stevie Wonder, you know, all the greatest bands, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and, right. you know, and now that's considered old school now. So there's a different level or quality of entertainment that's happening now, especially with the television shows, the reality shows like American Idol and, you know, TV shows like that. So it's, it's more... Um, I think there's a slight distortion because you still have to work. And I think a lot of the new artists that are coming in or that are aspiring new artists that are coming in, they don't get that part of it. Mm. They don't get that until they're almost in the midst of it. Right, right, exactly. They miss the woodshed part of it that I call. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. The paying your dues part. A very important part. Yeah. If you want to be great at anything, it says you have to go into that the place where you have to practice your craft and make it happen, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's not just one yeah. of those things you get up and just start singing one day. I say, I want to sing and put some effects on your voice and all that. You have to be able to deliver. Yeah. You come from That's a school right. of delivery, huh? That's right. <laughs> That's I like right. that. I'm going to use that. <laughs> school of <laughs> delivery. <laughs> hey, you know what? Speaking of that, though, check it out. I'm sure the audience wants to know, um, are there any new projects in the works, any new CDs coming out soon? We are in the process of um, uh, talking about getting back in the studio now. There's a possible, possible reality show, um, a possible book that we're um, talking about uh, working on, and uh, a possible world tour. Next year is going to be our 20th uh, year uh, anniversary being wow. in the business. That is amazing. So, yeah, so we want, you know, we want to go out with the blast. So we, we're talking about it now. You know, that's so funny to me. I mean, I guess I guess that means a lot to different people because every time I look at you, I still see Terry, the young <laughs> girl, just, you know, I want to sing right. type of girl, you know. And right, this right, is like right. the 20th anniversary of you doing your thing with Involve. What an amazing situation. Congratulations on that. 
Thank you. You got to come back on the show on the 20th and um, let's talk about a little more stuff because I can tell you right now, there's so much to talk about with you. That mm-hmm. I know we're going to run into a time thing again. I just know it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Hopefully we won't. We'll try to get through this and, and come out with a, a great interview here. So basically, you know, in a nutshell, we may return to some of the things that happened to you in your past and bring it into the current conversation of um, men, women, and relationships. But I do want to get to uh, to that right now. And, uh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Yes, 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 indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. Ha, 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 ha. It's a hot topic. It's a hot topic. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Ha, ah, what is that? We. <laughs> Too bad I can't say. <laughs> anyway, you know what? It's interesting to me because I know for a fact I've been around situations and, uh, and I heard people talking about uh you know, in Vogue at different times, and it's for, uh, which one do you like? Well, I like that one. I didn't tell them that I knew any of you all, right? And so I like that one. Ooh, check her out. And she got the pretty eyes and this and that and other and all that. So now you out there with all these men checking you out. And, of course, you got your needs as a woman. You know, you want to have the perfect mate. And, you know, you want to know what's out there. So that brings us to the, tonight's topic, which is like, what's your <laughs> wish list for the perfect mate? What's my wish list for the perfect mate? And I know that goes kind of deep. I know we got to <laughs> break that down a little bit because that, that could be a lot of things. I mean, I like big arms. I like big legs. You know, I like a person that got a big back. <laughs> I like big hands. I like big feet. <laughs> we ain't say nothing about the mental, huh? <laughs> I like a brother with his head on straight. Exactly. You know? <laughs> I don't want to down low, brother. I don't want to low down, brother. <laughs> I want somebody to that's cool. Foremost, okay. Exactly. Yes. I mean, but okay. Let's let's just take it like let's just take it like from right. a physical perspective. You know, like right. you know, first of all, if we kind of like point it towards the physical aspects of the type of man that you like. What are you drawn to physically? You know what I'm I'm drawn to. Um, well. <laughs> Obviously, the first thing you see is aesthetic. Mm-hmm. So you now you're gonna use a big word on the aesthetic. Aesthetic. <laughs> you gonna the use physical. a real big word? Nobody, nobody knows what that means. I'm just. Playing. I mean the physical. You know that's 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 your initial attraction. Right. 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 Right.